Hi, this is Dr. Mark Milia, and I appreciate you taking a look at our video here of rotator cuff repairs. I am an orthopedic surgeon who specializes in shoulder surgery and sports medicine. My practice is in Detroit, Michigan. In metropolitan Detroit, I have three offices serving uh, Oakland and Wayne County. Uh, this video is actually the inside of somebody's shoulder. There is no, there's no blood, but you will be able to appreciate mainly what we see when we do the procedure. Basically, the way the rotator cuff works is it's a tendon that is localized underneath this particular bone. This bone here is called the acromion bone. And due to its prominence and its, and its position up above the rotator cuff tendon, it frequently becomes prominent and can rub a, basically a tear into the tendon. So the first thing that we do is we actually expose the bone by removing the tissues across it. And then we use a device called a burr that allows us to smooth out the bone and remove the bony prominence, which you essentially see here. So this device is a burr. It's just basically a high spinning um, device that smooths out the bone and removes the bone to make it smoother. Uh, this portion of the procedure is not necessary in every patient, but it's frequently performed in conjunction with the rotator cuff repair. The next portion of the procedure is to evaluate the size of the tear. This is a view of the supraspinatus tendon, which lies just below the bone spur that we were just removing. I'm probing it with a spinal needle. It's approximately 15 to 20 millimeters uh, in length, which is about the size of a nickel or a quarter. And so this would be considered a small tear. The next thing that we do is to get the tendon ready for repair by placing suture into the bone that is where the tendon actually belongs. So this is a two millimeter drill bit that's making a small pilot hole into the bone. And through that drill bit, we can actually place suture. That suture gets secured into the bone and in this, in this scenario, there is no metal being left into the patient's bone. That suture right there actually then gets woven into the tendon with a sewing device which is visualized here. Once the sutures are placed through the tendon, they, they then secure the tendon across the top. Now in this case, there's four sutures total and they are actually placed into this plastic device which actually holds the suture into the bone. So if you imagine the suture is secured in two locations, one is on the inner portion of the tendon and the other is on the outer portion of the tendon. And basically what that does is it secures the tendon back along to its normal anatomic attachment, also known as the footprint. So you can see here those four sutures are squeezing the tendon up against the bone where it belongs. And so you can no longer see the tear. Once this is performed, the patient is placed in a sling. We, wait, we have the patients wear the sling approximately three or four weeks, but they can remove the sling on an on intermittent basis during the course of a day and do an exercise called a pendulum exercise. And that allows the shoulder to move freely, but gently for the first month. After that, we do a more aggressive rehabilitation protocol. From a work or sports perspective, most patients are then back doing what they enjoy doing or need to do by three to four months. I hope that clears up any questions you may have related to the experience and the procedure. Please feel free to check out our website, drmarkmelia.com, for more innovative procedures and explanations, as well as my contact information. Thank you for your time.